Hello everyone, and welcome to the Brick Formula review of my own creation. And this time I'm going to talk about the Goliath, which is inspired by the Goliath from the PC game StarCraft II. And Blizzard Entertainment does not authorize, endorse, or sponsor this creation right here. This is completely fan made by myself, and I'll talk about this as far as what it looks like all around, what went to the designs, and the playable features too. And I'll go into more detail on all that coming up. For starters, I'll show you what this thing looks like all around, but before I do that, I do recommend that you go to the StarCraft Wiki website and search up the Goliath, and just take a look at the picture in the top right, or halfway down the page, right under StarCraft 2, you'll see another picture of the Goliath in this pose exactly. This way you can see a quick comparison, all right? And this thing, as you can see, is about 95% accurate, so not too bad. You'll also notice that the legs are really sturdy too, which I'm really proud of because that was a real challenge to fix and everything. And that's because the top is pretty heavy and a lot of the joints that are available to make mechs aren't very strong. So you'll see a combination of clicky joints over here and here. And I even use the same joints from the at, -AT Walker legs over here. And what's also bad about it is that this thing will still fall over real fast if you do not position the joints properly because it's all about just getting this thing balanced. And it's really not a flaw in the design, it's more like the design of the Goliath itself. So it's a pretty challenging thing to do once you build this thing, if you decide to. And what's also inaccurate about this model is that this thing is huge. I tried to build this thing to minifigure scale, and it's just not possible because of the size of the missiles and squeezing in all the details on the legs here. There's a lot of other problems too, but in the end, it's just better to build it big like this, and it still looks pretty good, and that's what I wanted. Now it's time to show you how to put the pilot inside, and it's a little bit tricky, because if you check the sources or other information on the Goliath, you'll see that no one really mentions how the pilot gets inside. So I took a few guesses. Maybe he goes through the canopy, and this thing just lifts up. It's a possibility. Or maybe up here, this is a top hatch, and he just slides down to that. Who knows? Or maybe he just goes through the back. We really have no idea. But I was fortunate enough to realize that when I was building this thing, this whole assembly can just lift up, which is pretty cool. So I decided to stick with that. And the way that works is, if you look at the back here, you gotta push this down just a little bit. This way you have a little opening over here. And then this thing can just lift up just like that, which is really cool. And this is as far as this should go too, because if it goes any further, this part right here will pop out the plates on the sides here, which is not something you want. And if you look inside, it's really basic. Although there is a control panel right behind here. Okay, and you'll see that in the instruction videos later on. And we'll just put a pilot in here. There's plenty of space. You can put a backpack on him if you want. And we'll just put the joysticks in his hands. And there we go. Not too bad, right? It's actually a pretty cool feature if you ask me. Next is the missile pod, or technically the Goliath's arm. And as you can see, there are two auto cannons over here. And that's how you can tell the difference between this version of the Goliath versus the original StarCraft Goliath, because that one only had one auto cannon. And this thing can move up and down like that. It's only connected by a ball and socket joint. And I use these black parts over here for extra friction. This way it's easier to pose this thing. And I have eight missiles over here. And they're not flick fire, but you can take them out, although they're really on there. So I'm not gonna bother. But anyway, if you compare this to the picture, you'll see that this part up here is a little bit inaccurate. And that's because I tried to use cheese slopes to copy the same design, although it looks terrible. So I decided to use these parts and it looks a lot better. All right, and there we go. I think all that's left to show you of this Goliath is the remaining movability. And here it is, it can move up and down like that. And it can rotate a full 360 degrees. See? And it'll still stand. Okay, here it is at 90. Not too bad. Okay, see? And here it is looking backwards, even though it doesn't do that. Or not supposed to. And there it is at 90 degrees again. See? Pretty sturdy. And there it is. Okay, it's held by a ball and socket joint over there. And because of the weight, you don't really have to worry about that thing being loose. So not too bad. Over here we have a machine gun right between the legs. Hmm. This part is probably a little bit inaccurate too because it was a little hard to see and I don't want to give the ladies the wrong impression, you know what I mean? Alright, but anyway, on the side here are the legs of course and these can rotate a lot like that. 
And I also added this part right here so they can move like this. And this way it just looks better when it's posing. The part about the leg that I don't like is the feet because they come off pretty easily. All right, but my original intention when I designed this was to make a stop motion video out of it. And I'm happy to say that I think I got it right despite that loose part. So it's really not meant for playing, just for posing and taking pictures. And let me show you a quick two second clip. Can you believe that took me 15 minutes to make? Unbelievable. So it looks like I got a lot of work to do. So don't expect to see a good video of this until like maybe a year or two from now. I have a long ways to go. I'm actually an amateur at it, but I'm working on it. Not too bad. So just let me know down in the comments if that clip was pretty good, okay, because I'm trying to make this thing walk smoothly. But anyway, as far as posing though, I think the model got it right. And there you have it. That's the Goliath. And now on to the recommendations. Overall, I think this creation will be either a hit or a miss with you because, as I mentioned earlier, this was mainly intended for a stop motion video. I never intended to design it for playabilities. And if you want just a standstill and pose, then this is pretty good. All right, can, maybe you can play it like that, but if you want to walk around, forget it. Now, when it comes to the value, well, it's not that great, but that's what you can come to expect with creations because you have to buy the parts individually. Just like the Vulture, you should check the parts list first just to see if you have most of the parts and then order the rest from there. Now, if you were to get it from scratch, you can get a vast majority of the parts from the pick a brick from the official LEGO website, and it's going to run you anywhere from $110 to $120 for the parts, which is pretty crazy. So unless you're really serious about the Goliath or whatever, then you know it's up to you what you want to do from there. And as always, if you do choose to get the parts from the official LEGO website, or if you just want to buy LEGO sets from there, always remember to go to my website first and click on the banner. This way I can get a small percentage of the sale at no additional cost to you. It'll be a great way for you to support the work that I'm doing, and you'll see more of this in the future, because I do have a lot of other things in mind. But anyway, that seems to be it. That sums up my review. I hope you guys enjoyed the show, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.